Hey everybody, welcome back to Chemistry. And so in this presentation, what I want to do is talk about something called intermolecular attractions. The reason why I want to talk about that is because they can oftentimes explain how high the melting or blowing point of a compound will be. So I'm going to be spending a fair amount of time talking about that. So I think I probably need to remind you what a melting and boiling point are. So these are the points where you have some kind of state change. So um, imagine here that we have a solid. And so this could be, for example, be ice, which is water in the solid form. And so if you were to have a super powerful microscope and look at the molecules in ice, you would see the water molecules are arranged in this nice definite order. These water molecules are really close together. They're maybe not quite touching each other, but they're again, they're st still very close together. And also you have to remember that even though you have ice and it's cold, <laughs> these uh, uh, water molecules in the ice are kind of vibrating back and forth in place. But very importantly here, none of these water molecules or molecules in a solid are gonna be able to travel around each other. Now, what you can do is you can warm up a solid, could be ice, and at some point in temperature, it will have a state change and it'll change to a liquid. And this point is called the melting point. And so all different kinds of compounds have their characteristic melting points. So with water, the temperature which this occurs is at zero degrees Celsius, but other compounds have different melting points. And so some compounds have very low melting points as I'll talk about in a bit, and other compounds have very high melting points. Okay, now here in the liquid state, you can see the molecules are there and they're as close to each other as you would find in the solid state. But here the difference is these water molecules can kind of move around each other. They stay pretty close to one another, but they can move around each other. So I'm trying to draw arrows here to indicate that these water molecules can move around each other. So if you get the liquid of some kind of compound, it could be water or something else, hot enough, it will boil. And so when it boils, then you're basically having the molecules transition from the liquid state to the gaseous state. And so when this occurs, um, at that temperature is the boiling point. And so in the gaseous state, now the molecules tend to be very far apart. They're not even close to touching one another. Um, they're very far apart from each other. And you sort of have to remind yourself is that they're traveling very fast. They're going about a thousand miles per hour. Okay, so one of the things we want to do is we want to look at the melting and boiling points of different kinds of compounds and understand why they are different from one another. So to give you a sense of the range of melting and boiling points, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you some quick examples. So for example, water, which is H2O. And so let me go ahead and draw a quick Lewis structure of that. Looks like this. And so here we're gonna be looking at the melting point of water, and I think you know at this point that this occurs at zero degrees Celsius, and maybe you know that's equivalent to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so also, you can warm up water until it boils, and at atmospheric pressure at sea level, it tends to boil at 100 degrees Celsius, uh, which is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So one of the things you already know is that if you're looking at the compound water, its state at room temperature is the liquid state. And so I'm gonna use the state symbol here. I'm gonna write an L like this. Okay, now let's compare that to some other molecules. So let's say you have another molecule. And so this molecule is called ethane. And so ethane is C2H6 and it kind of looks like this. So we have two carbons in the center of the molecule, and then you have six hydrogens bound to the carbon like this. So that's good old ethane. And so you might wonder, well, at what temperature does it melt? So 
first you have to imagine what solid ethane looks like. Solid ethane really doesn't look any much different than solid water. Um, it's just that to get the solid ethane, you need an extremely cold temperature. And so that temperature where solid ethane transitions to liquid ethane, the melting point, is believe it or not, negative 189 degrees Celsius. So it's an extremely low temperature, okay? Now solid ethane here, the molecules will melt at that temperature, negative 189, and then the molecules will kind of move around each other in the liquid state. And so for a while at certain higher temperatures, you're gonna have liquid ethane. But then you get to a point where the ethane may be warm enough that it starts boiling. So what temperature is that? Well, it starts boiling even at a relatively cold temperature. So it starts boiling um, well below zero at negative 89 degrees Celsius. And so that tells us something that ethane at room temperature is going to be a gas. Okay, now the last compound I wanna talk about is sodium chloride. So good old table salt, sodium chloride. So again, this is table salt. Um, and so here is a Lewis structure of that if you wanna draw one. Um, so here I have sodium with its one valence electron given to chlorine with its seven valence electrons. So you might be wondering um, what is its melting temperature? So when you think about table salt, I think you know at this point that at room temperature and pressure, it's in the solid state. So let me mark that here for sodium chloride, it's in the solid state. So that tells you something, that the melting temperature of sodium chloride has gotta be a lot higher than room temperature, right? And in fact, you have to give sodium chloride a lot of heat before the solid sodium chloride crystals melt into liquid sodium chloride. And so that temperature occurs when you're all the way up to 801 degrees Celsius. So extremely high temperature. Then you have liquid sodium chloride. Um, the ions are kind of moving about each other. And at a certain point, what you can do is you can give the hot liquid sodium chloride enough temperature that then those ions just kind of fly off into space and they vaporize. And that's the boiling point of sodium chloride. And believe it or not, that's an extremely high temperature. That's at 1,000 465 degrees Celsius. So you can see that different compounds have an incredible range at temperatures where they melt and boil. And the reason why this occurs is because these different compounds have different kinds of attractions between the molecules. So it turns out sodium chloride has very strong attractions between the ions. And so you need tremendous amounts of heat to break those strong attractions to get sodium chloride to melt. But as you can imagine water, the attractions are there, but they're not nearly as strong. And so room temperature is just enough heat to sort of break some of the bonds between the water molecules to have it moving around as a liquid. On the other hand, the attractions between the ethane molecules are extremely weak. And so if you have room temperature, that's far more than enough energy to break any kinds of these weak bonds between the ethane molecules. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna talk about these different kinds of attractions. However, we can make one generalization that um, when you have an ionic compound it is probably going to be a solid at room temperature. So let me just write here, ionic compound at room temperature, all of them, or almost all of them, are solids at room temperature. And again, it's because the bonds between the ions are extremely strong. How about covalent compounds? Well, with covalent compounds, you really have a variety of states they can be in at room temperature. So oftentimes they are liquids. Sometimes they are gases at room temperature, but then there are a few that are actually solids at room temperature as well. So the basic breakdown here is ionic compounds, they're all solids at room temperature, while covalent compounds, some are solids, 
but there are more that are liquids and gases at room temperature. And so I wanted to explain why that occurs. So if I can increase the slide. <clears throat> 